Good morning. Praise be to the name of the Father. Merry almost Christmas Eve. <laughs> Merry almost Christmas Eve. Glory to God. You know, it's a, it is a, it's a great thing to know and to know and to know to know that when you pass away, your future is secure. You don't have to be scared. You don't have to be in doubt. It is a great thing to know. Uh, the Bible says, if you believe in your heart and you confess at your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe that God rose Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. I went and looked up that word saved again. It means righteousness. It means preservation. It means uh, sanctification. It also means uh, deliverance. Anything that you can possibly think of as far as being saved is concerned, you save from it. Uh, uh, Dr. Holloway, he always used to say it like this, save from all hurt and harm. Man, hurting hard. So, I'm sorry, kind of like uh, got some stuff in my mouth here. Got some things going on. It don't sound like I'm kind of be gross here. I'll put that down there. <laughs> uh, we been, we started a series several weeks ago. Several weeks ago, uh, of everything that's surrounding the word. Everything that surrounds the word. It is the word that delivers. I went and was reading in the book of Acts the other day, and it says, and the word prevailed. I think it's Acts chapter 8. And the word prevailed. The word prevailed. The word prevailed. Uh, if, if you are standing on God's word as you move through life, that word will prevail you. In any situation, I used to wonder, you know, you know, you you know, you hear people say, "No, get a plan, get a plan, get a plan, get a plan, then work your plan, get a plan, then work your plan, get a plan, then work your plan." And 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 a lot of times in business, that's that's good, that's really really good. And then you might have a plan, you know, I have a plan, you know, you you you, you listen. I don't know where it's coming from. Let's just say like you're a brand new parent. And then you know, this this baby popping up. Mama, mama having all these things going on inside of her body. You know, sickness and or whatever, you know, because the baby and they're kicking on the stomach and they're and, and uh, uh or they bumping up against your arteries and stuff. Hmm. <laughs> and you wanna wanna go in the bathroom and you know, you you know. And then hey, you know, you got daddy over here. Daddy, he see his wife going through these challenges, and he know it's a baby, and then all of a sudden, he looking at the financial side of the house, he like, now how are we going to afford this kid? What if this kid, uh, what if this, and, and what about, and, you know, college and, and, you know, and school, and, you know, and then he look at the news, and he see all hell breaking loose in the world. He's like, I got to raise this kid up in there. And, and all of a sudden you, you say, Lord, help me. I don't know what to do. How do you create a plan for a brand new life? You just really, it's, it's, you know, the Bible says that God knows the ways of a man. He knows the ways of a man. But the Bible also says that the ways of a man are futile. It, it's, it's pointless. When God says, a righteous man, he will direct his paths. What does that got to do with what we've been talking about? Uh, since we've been studying on this word, we've been hitting and missing just different topics. We haven't really studied on one specific scripture. And today it's not, it's not going to be anything different since tomorrow is Christmas Day. Christmas Day, we're going we to cap it off with the second service after things surround the word, the word of God. I want you all to take, turn your Bible to the book of Nehemiah, chapter 8. 
Nehemiah chapter 8. And, it, and just, just like you, you might think that I was just rambling now about a plan, you, you'll see what I'm talking about. <laughs> you'll see what I'm talking about when you get to Nehemiah chapter 8. It is the, se it's the first book after the book of Ezra. And it is, the, it is right before the book of Esther. Right before the book of Esther. Right before the book of Esther. If you go to 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, unless you get the digital book, the digital Bible, it's real easy. But 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, Ezra, then Nehemiah. Ezra, and, and he's not the first prophet of the uh, Old Covenant, but he's he was, it's not in chronological order. But he was the way that they, they tried to create a storyline because if you know anything about Ezra, uh, Nehemiah, they kind of like live in the same time frame. Ezra and Nehemiah, they were not the front runners of, of the Old Testament prophets. Isaiah and Ezekiel were. Isaiah and Ezekiel were. And Elijah. Elijah. Elijah, Elisha, and Elijah. <laughs> Even though they live, they, they live, Elisha and Elijah, they live in the same time frame. Elijah was the older one. Elisha was the older one, and Elijah was the younger one. Okay. What did that got to do? I'm just trying to like give you a little small history behind it. So you, so you, when you get it, when we start reading this thing, you know, it, it's like you, 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 you'll pick up on it. Uh, hey, y'all there? Kind of like give y'all some time. Look it up. Ezra, I'm in Nehemiah chapter 8. Look what it says. <coughs> it says, Ezra, if you, if, if you got a good Bible, at the top of it, Ezra, uh, I'm going to get that. Okay, you ready? You ready? Okay, here we go. <laughs> at the top of it, Ezra chapter 8. It may, if you got a good Bible, it, in my Bible, it reads, Ezra reads the law. Ezra reads the law. Now, this law is, that it's going to be referring to is called the Old Testament laws. And the reason why I'm giving y'all the history behind it, because remember, at this time, they were just living it out. The only scriptures that they had was the Pentateuch or the Torah, whichever one you want to do. The Pentateuch means Hebrew. It's the Hebrew word. It's the Hebrew word. Uh, the first five books of the Bible. And then Torah is the Greek word for the first five books of the Bible. So let's just name the first five books of the Bible because that's all they had at the time. It was Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. That's what they had at that time. They didn't have. They couldn't go back and read Ezra. It, it was being lived out. They couldn't go back and read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It hadn't even came up yet. <laughs> they didn't have uh, the Book of Acts to the Book of Revelation. It hadn't come up yet. Matter of fact, First Chronicle, if you go, uh, uh, First Samuel, Second Samuel, First Kings, Second Kings. First Chronicles and Second Chronicles, those six books, those things had just been lived out. They had just been lived out. And their people were going back and starting to write those books. Okay, of, of that, that history. So when you get here in, I mean, in Nehemiah chapter 8, look at verse, look at the top of it, the very first one, it says, When the seventh month came, the children of Israel were in their cities. Okay? The children of Israel were in their cities. Those were the cities that God had promised them. They were in their cities. I want, I want if you go back and read some more and in, in throughout the book of Exodus, when the children of Israel was getting delivered, when they was getting delivered uh, with Mo, by the hand of God through Moses and Aaron, God was telling them, I will take you into a promised land. That I'm, I will take you to this to this mountain, this land filled with milk and honey. I will take you in there. It was um, he was promising them that, but in their surroundings, all they saw, all they saw was what? Egypt. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they saw Pharaoh trying to kill them. 
trying to keep them in bondage, trying to keep them in slavery. That's all they saw. And then God ended up taking them into the wilderness, and a lot of them, because they didn't believe God, a lot of them ended up dead right there in the wilderness. And their children, their, 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 their young children, their grandchildren, the older crowd who didn't believe, God let them just get old and die off. <clears throat> but then their children, their grandchildren, here they are. They're about to get ready. They, they're going into the promised land. Now watch this. Now watch this. Verse, uh, the next one, it says, All the people gathered together as one man in the area in front of the water gate. And they asked Ezra, the scribe, to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the first five books of the Bible, which the Lord had commanded Israel. On the first day of the seventh month, Ezra, 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 I'm stretching that out now because you're going you're gonna to be real key here in a second. Ezra, the priest, brought the law before the congregation of men, women, and all who could listen with understanding. So that, I want y'all to really, really think about that. All the men and women, women who could listen with understanding. That tells me right there that there were some people at that time, no matter how much, it's just like, uh, we have people in today's society, you know, with uh, uh, Down syndrome, you know, uh, mental retardation, stuff like that. You know, not speaking that negative against anybody, but you know, because of their understanding, it's hard for them to grab hold to things. And that's no, it's like, it's not saying that they won't grab hold to it. It's not saying that at all. I don't want nobody to be trying to take this up and make it seem like that I'm coming against that. That, 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 that group of people because it's not the God loved them people Jesus died for them just as much as he died for me and if you get them born again you, you lead them to Jesus Christ when they die guess what and even some of them who hadn't reached that age of accountability yet just like any other child when they die they're going to go to heaven and ain't going to be no more such thing as mental retardation or Down syndrome they're going to be completely full intact glory to God man but the whole purpose for this setting was to bring people with under, who, can, who can understand it. And we're going to find out here later on down the road that there's going to be some people, even after the reading of my God, God's law, they still don't understand. <laughs> they still didn't grab hold to it. But the whole point was to get them to understand what God's word meant to them. Okay, watch this, watch this, watch this. On the first day of the month, seventh year, Ezra, the priest, brought the law before the congregation of men and women who could listen and understand him. In the, in the area in front of the water gate, he read aloud from sunrise until midday to the men, women, and those who could understand. All the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Now, I want you to think about this. Look what it says. From sunrise until midday. Sunrise around here is what, like 6, six o'clock, 6.30 in the morning, 6.30 in the morning. So let's just, 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 just pause here. Look, we're breaking it down. 6.30 in the morning for us, 6.30 in the morning to midday. What's midday? 12 o'clock noon, right? Mm -hmm. So let's just say for five and a half hours, Y'all struggle with one or two hours of service. <laughs> Some of y'all do out there too. When somebody up here teaching the word, chicken, games, oh, it's gonna be Christmas. I gotta go finish my Christmas shopping. <laughs> mm -hmm. Here they are. They sitting there. Look what they said. What they do? They sat and they listened mm -hmm. attentively from sunrise to midday. Listening to somebody just read the word. Like me, when I get in my car, when I get in my truck, I like to turn, plug the phone, plug, plug the little thing up, the right something, phone, and uh, to, to the auxiliary plug, and then I, I, I 
I put it on, and I turned the Bible on, and I listened to that electronic woman's voice just read scripture to me while I'm driving away. That 35 minute drive to work, you know. Don't you fall asleep? No, it's, it, you, it's you, no, it's no. I don't get tired of hearing the word of God being read to me. Just for what? I mean, I'm really man. I will be gone sleep and trying to drive sleeping at the same time. No, you listen, and every so often. Sometimes my mind will drift and I'll stop, I have to pay attention. I really, really have to pay attention to the traffic because that's what you're supposed to be doing anyway. <laughs> but every so often while I'm riding, you know, why, why that little woman's electronic voice is reading to me, something will jump out. And I'd be like, yeah, Lord, yeah, Lord, that, that, that's right. And this is why you said, and I'll stop preaching to myself while I'm in the car. This, yeah, and this is what I should be. Okay, okay, here we go, here we go. Watch this. Verse 4. Ezra the scribe stood on a raised wood platform which they had made for the purpose. Bes I mean, beside him stood, uh, I've, I've never been good with, with some of these uh, Hebrew names, so I'm not going to try to read them. I'm really not because I'll mess them all up. <laughs> but I want y'all to look at the names. Y'all see the names in verse, verse 4? Name, the name, the name, the name. In his right hand and on his left hand, the name, the name, the name, the name, the name. I don't want to mess nobody's name or be pronouncing some, spelling somebody else's name wrong. Now, when you get when you read that last name, you get to verse five. It said, Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people because he was above all the people. Now, I want y'all to think about that. Use me as the example. What if this podium was raised up, a wooden box, it's just up here, and we climb up to a platform, and all of a sudden, I'm reading the book, and then I open the book up to you. You see what I just did? Y'all see that? Y'all see that out there? I open the book up to you. This opening of the book, the reason why it says it like that, it is opening up God's understanding. It's almost like it's almost like <clears throat> if I, when I open the book up, your understanding turned on. Okay, y'all, y'all want to play this game with me? Okay, you, you, you like, and you just open up a book. No, soon as I open up the book, my book was already open. Well, as soon as he opened up the book, it's almost like God, the Holy Spirit came over the top of people's understanding. Yeah. The sister scripture to that would be in Ephesians uh, chapter 4. It says that the eyes of our understanding should be enlightened. The eyes of our understanding. Not, not these physical eyes that you see, but, but your understanding, the eyes in your brain. Here we go, here we go. What, what, is it? what, what is it say? Because he was above all the people. And as he opened it, all the people stood up. When Ezra blessed the Lord as the great God, all the people responded, Amen, Amen. What else did they do? By lifting up their hands as they bowed their heads, they worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Now they were standing up. They were standing up. Oh, my glass to fall off. But then they did, they're like this. Praise you, Jesus. I mean, I, they want to say Jesus. Praise you, Lord God. Praise you, Lord God. Okay? Head down, face to the ground. When you when you drop your head, when you lift your hands up to the Father, it's, it's, it's a sign of surrender. You say, Lord, I'm surrendering me to you. I don't know everything, but I know you do. Remember, we read just a few weeks ago about Melchizedek. Melchizedek, it says that he had, the, his name represents, even though Melchizedek the person, <laughs> the, the person does not represent this, but his name represents a person who has no beginning, a person who has no ending, a person who has no birth, <laughs> and a person who has no death. That's God. That's who it's referring to. The Bible says already lived out 
every possible scenario on your behalf. He lived it out. And he says, okay, if Ivory would just take my word and apply my word here in this situation, even though he can't see the future, he'll walk right into the future I planned for him. Oh, glory to God, man. That, it just, woo, just sit goosebumps. I, I appreciate a good goosebumps every so often. I don't get up too much of feeling, but that one was good. I, I, I'll walk, if I apply his word, I'll walk right into the destiny, even though I don't understand it. I'll walk right off into it. Look what he said. Look what he said. This, this gets even better. This gets even better. Look what it says. Verse 7. More names. I'm not going to try to read them. I don't want to mess nobody's names up. <laughs> then, the name, the name, a whole bunch of names. Look what it says. And the Levites explain the law to the people while they stood in their place. They read from the book, from the law of God, with interpretation and gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. Notice, all these guys, as they was reading it, they was also explaining it, just like I'm doing right now. No, no difference. They did the same thing too. They did the same thing too. Look what it says in verse 9. Then Nehemiah, the magistrate, Ezra, the priest and scribe, and the Levites who were teaching the people said to all the people, This day is holy to your Lord God. Stop mourning and weeping. This, I mean, stop mourning and weeping. This was because all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Now, whoa, 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 whoa. Why they cry? This is why they cry. They understood that God had their best interest at heart. And they were going about doing what they wanted to do. And they saw the results of how they were living compared to the result of how God wanted them to live. I'm going to say it again because some of y'all heard it some of y'all didn't hear it. They were crying because they saw the results of how they were living and their plans and what they were putting in play. They saw the results of that. But then when they understood the results of how God wanted them, they're like, oh my goodness, God, your plan is a whole lot better than mine. Ah, ah. Have y'all ever been on that road? I know I have. When I started seeing the results that God, what God wanted, I was like, looking at my surroundings, I'm like, Jesus, you are Lord. It's a, hum it's a humbling experience when you really finally understand that God does have your best interests at heart. He does have your best interests at heart. You don't know the future. He does. Oh, glory to God. Watch, 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 watch this. <coughs> watch this, verse, verse 10. He said, then he said to them, go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, drink, and send portions to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. Do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Some of y'all may have heard that, that, that statement before. The joy of the Lord. What is he referring to the joy of the Lord? God's plans and purposes for an individual's life. How many of y'all have ever read this before? It's been in here the whole time. Look what it says. 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 Do not be grieved. Do not be grieved. Do not be grieved. That's one of them do nots again. But how can I not be grieved? The joy of the Lord. When you begin to understand that God's plans and purposes are in your best interest, you have no reason to be grieved. What's the point? 
Well, I don't know. That's when you begin to trust what God said. Even though you can't see the whole scenario. Sometimes you don't need to see the whole scenario. You really don't. I mean, think about it. If you go read, uh, if you go read throughout the, in the New Testament, you'll read what Peter and Paul, they knew exactly when they were going to die. I don't need to know that. Hmm. That's something I don't need to know. If you go back and read, uh, you read, read right at the end of uh, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy, yeah, Deuteronomy, yeah, and then Deuteronomy, you'll read where Moses was 125 years old, and God didn't call him really into the ministry until he was 80, so it was another 45 more years when he, and he, he started his ministry at 80 years old. It was another 45 more years before, he, before his ministry ended. And then Joshua took up the mantle. But then God said, okay, Moses, you come on up here so you can die. <laughs> this was God, I, I don't need to know that. That's something I don't need to know. I really, really don't need to know that. Um, some of you all may have had family members who they just knew when they was going to die. They just knew it. Uh, so they say, they might say, okay, all right, uh, I'll see y'all later. Goodbye. And you be like, well, what are you talking about, auntie? What are you talking about? Uh, nothing. It's just nothing. I, I ain't going to be here much longer. Auntie, you crazy. You, 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 you full of help. Ain't no wrong to you. You ain't going to die. And then they go to bed, and they don't wake up. <laughs> and they, they, they just told you that they, was, they just know it. I don't need to know. I don't need to know. So, but that's the end of their, that's the end of the course of this time while they're in this earth. I had aunties and stuff like that. They just told for when they just knew they was gonna pass away. I don't need to know. I don't need to know. So get back into the script because I don't want to be depressed no by now. <laughs> Look what it says here. Look what it says. He says, verse eleven. So the Levites quieted all the people, saying, "Hush." So if you have somebody ever tell y'all hush, that's a good thing to do. Not shut up. Sometimes I say shut up too, but hush. <laughs> I had a crappy joke there. Y'all were too serious there for a second. Because today is holy, you should stop being so sorrowful. Then all the people went to eat and to drink. And as the, what, what they do? What, what are they going to do? Go out and live. Trust God. Go get you something to eat, man. That's what I'm going to do right after service. Give me something to eat. To send the send then when I get something to eat, I'm going to go send portions. To somebody else, um, give, because we are in the season of giving right now. Am I not correct? We're in the season of giving. You go give to those people who don't have nothing to have. And ain't nobody prepared nothing for them. So they just, some of them, some today, today what, going to be Christmas Eve this tonight, day before Christmas, and tomorrow Christmas Day. Some people, they their Christmas dinner is going to be Roman noodles. And some people going to have nothing. Did that say Roman? Ramen, I'm sorry, big word, ramen noodles. And what do you say? And to enjoy <clears throat> a great a celebration because they had understood the words declared to them. Now question, what did God tell them to do here? Did he say, go pay tithes? Did he say, uh, Go out and, and lead somebody to Jesus or lead somebody to God. What did he say go do? Let the joy of the Lord be your strength. Go eat and drink. And then he says give. Why? Because you understood. Sometimes preachers make things so difficult, man, when it comes to God's word. Well, you know, you got to get your 10 steps. And when you get your 10 steps, and you got to do this, and you got to do that. And you know, sometimes you can look back in your life and you say, okay, this step led me to that step, to that step, to this step. But trying to come up with a step just so that people can receive this, I'm going to stay with the word. I'm going to, Lord, what did you say? Ivory understood and understand what I'm trying to tell you. Trust me. Watch this. Here you go. Here you go. It gets even better, man. It gets even better. Verse 13. 
on the second day, so one day has gone by, the chiefs of the father's household of all the people, the priests and the Levites, were gathered to Ezra, the scribe, in order to understand the words of the law. Whoa, 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 whoa. I want y'all to underline it. What did he say? Not just the regular congregation, but what did he say? The chiefs of the father's households, that would be me, because you know, I'm the father of my household, I'm the chief man. The priests <laughs> and the Levites, the preachers, gathered to Ezra, the scribe, so that they can understand. While Ezra was reading, and he had all these other Levites trying to get them to teach, go back and read all those names, because I told y'all those names are going to be significant. In verse 7, in verse 7, they was out teaching it to the people, and now here they come back to Ezra, Ezra, what in the world are we just teaching? Man, that has happened to me on so many occasions. I'll be teaching in our study, I'll prepare for a message, and I'll read the word of God. And I'll say, okay, yeah, 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 and I'll understand it. I think I'll understand it. And I'll start teaching it. And all of a sudden the Spirit of God will take over my lips. And I'll start teaching something. Then I go back and do the editing session, do the video and stuff, and I'm listening, I'm like, why did I say that? Now, now I'm writing down notes about what I was teaching. Because <laughs> it comes back teaching to me. The Holy Spirit comes back with me. Look what verse 14 says. They found written in the law where the Lord had commanded by Moses that the children of Israel should dwell in booths in the feast of the seventh month. Notice what they did. They went and found a particular scripture now. And these particular scriptures, if you go read it, the connecting verse to it is Leviticus chapter 23, verses 34. Those are connecting verses as well as uh, 34 through 40. I'm sorry, 34 through 40. That's the connecting verses to it. You know what it said? In the feast of the seventh month, and that they should publish and proclaim in all their cities in Jerusalem, go out to the hills and bring olive branches, the olive branches always referring to the uh, Hebrew, I mean the Hebrew, <laughs> the uh, uh, Israeli nation, Israel, that's the olive branch, along with wild olive branches, myrtle branches, palm branches, and other leafy branches to make booze as it was written. So the people went out and brought back branches and made themselves booze, each household did so on uh, on its roof in their yard on the grounds of the house of God in the era in front of the water gate or in the area of at, at the gate of Ephraim. What has all these booths got to do with anything? They was talking about making a small communion with, with each other. Okay, here we, here we, here we go. All the, uh, all the congregation who had returned from captivity, made booze and lived in them, not since the days of Joshua, the son of Nun, which is Joshua, to that day had the children of Israel had done so. And there was, excuse me, tremendously, a uh, tremendously great feast. The day before they understood the Levite said, what were we teaching on? We found this. What does this mean? Ezra explained it to them, and look what it came about. A great feast. And, do, and day by day, from the first day to the last day, he read from the book of the law that they celebrated the feast seven days on the eighth day, where was a solemn assembly as required. Now, over the last 35 minutes, we just read, you know, we read 18 verses. We read one whole chapter. What is all this got to do? What did what, what it say? What did it say? They read the word. And just the reading and understanding of the word. 
And then what did they do? They went ahead and they applied what the scripture said. And what did it bring forth? A great, tremendous feast. Glory to God. Okay. Some of you all out there in society right now, we celebrating this time of Christmas, of Jesus' birthday. I still I hear people say happy holidays. I don't get mad when people say happy holidays. That's what you want to say. I'm going to say Christmas. Merry Christmas. Okay. Merry Christmas. Uh, we're in these holidays, and some people are so frustrated, you, you find yourself caught up in the whirlwind of, of, of marketing, trying to purchase and trying to buy. Now, I like buying. Don't get me wrong. And I like the past lot of gifts and stuff like that. I love it. It's a great thing. But if you don't understand that the joy of the Lord is your strength, you'll get caught up in all of that, and then you won't be able to see past the marketing part of it. You'll totally forget all about what this Christmas is about. This Christmas is about Jesus and his birth. Remember a few weeks back when we read in the book of Acts? Matter of fact, let's go read it. Acts. Acts chapter 2. Acts. Acts chapter 2, I'm sorry, Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. <clears throat> what is that? Verse 9. Y'all there? Look what it said. When he had spoken these things, while they looked, he was taken up, and a cloud received him, from their sight. Well, what, what, what just happened, if you go read it before, Jesus was just, he was on earth 40 more days, preaching and teaching to his disciples, teaching his disciples, and expounding all those things about pertaining to the kingdom. He was breaking it down. He was giving them more insight, some more word. Well, after he got through t t speaking and spoken these things, he, the cloud received them, and he just went on back up into that, and went on back to heaven. Verse 10. While they looked intently toward heaven as he ascended, suddenly two men stood by them with white garments. They said, they said, men of Galilee, why stand looking toward heaven this same Jesus who was taken up from you to heaven will come in like manner as ye saw him go into heaven. The same Jesus the same word that you reading right here now, he's going to come back. You're going to actually physically see the, the physical, spiritual Jesus at one time. He's going to be right there in front of you. You're going to actually be able to touch him. Uh, uh, well, what movie was that? You know, me and my wife, we was, uh, we was uh, watching, uh, we was somewhere the other day. And what, what, what was we at? The, uh, the, 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 what that thing we did the other day, man? The kids, the, the, the ch our children, the, the music and stuff, and they were playing uh, the thing about the Polar Express, and they said, "Why don't you watch that movie?" Well, if you if you go look toward the end of that movie, yeah, they you go look toward the end of that movie, and all of a sudden the little one kid jumping around saying, "He said, you know, I can't see, I can't see." And Santa Claus was coming in, and he wanted to see Santa Claus so bad. Now, I know this ain't Santa Claus. Jesus ain't Santa Claus. I know that. But Santa Claus was coming in on his big, big old carriage, and you know, all his presents was coming down out of the sky. And all his kids were running around, jumping and jumping and stuff. And all of a sudden, he finally said, I believe he saw Jesus. Well, I mean, well, I'm sorry, y'all. Y'all could the connection right there? He saw Jesus. Hmm. It's the same way with you. It's the same way. Y'all hear me out there? It's the same way. The moment 
you uh, it's really. the moment you really say yeah. I believe. I believe. If you see Romans chapter Romans ten verse nine and ten, that's the doorway. I believe in my heart. I confess in my mouth that Jesus is Lord. Some people don't get the visual image of Jesus at that moment. And I ain't talking about some white man that you put up on the wall or some Hebrew man that you put up on the wall, you know, some image of Jesus. You know, I, I, I can't t couldn't tell you the physical image of Jesus. The Bible does give reference to him, but you know, you know, the Bible does say, make, it makes so many references about Jesus' physical appearance, something like that. But the moment you ask that, Lord, I believe, and you begin to commune with him here and here, you'll see him. You'll see him. I ain't trying to be spooky. <laughs> and because some of us, you know, you, you just hallucinate. That's all them drugs that you did out back in the old days. No, no. I, 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 me, I, I, my heart is to see Jesus. And I really want to see the brother. All right, now, and now when I, now, since I do see him here, I see him here. And I sense his presence. Look what he said. This same Jesus who was taken away, you're going to see him come back. Think about, think about all the crowds of people who set up under Jesus' ministry when they had a chance. And some, a lot of them played the re religious game. We just talked on that just the other day. They ran up behind Jesus cause, just because he was feeding them and he was healing them. Yeah. They never actually had an opportunity to sit up under Jesus' feet. Martha tapped in. I mean, uh, Mary tapped yeah. into that. Martha married the two sisters. Mm -hmm. Martha and it was it was it was uh, Martha married our two sisters. They had their own home, and Martha she was so busy in the kitchen and said saw so, saw so, so Mary her sister sitting at the feet of Jesus. Jesus couldn't Bible didn't say, don't really say what Jesus was teaching on. He was just sitting there. He might have just been sitting there breathing. I mean, I do that with my wife, and I'm sure my wife does that with me. You just sit there and you just listen to him breathe. Literally, it sounds creepy and weird, weird <laughs> but you, you, you do. You, 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 you love their presence. And let's say like if Jesus was teaching on something. She's sitting there listening attentively, just like the, the preachers were, the Levi Edward was, when the, all the people were sitting there. They were just sitting there for, for five hours, over five hours, just sitting there listening to somebody teach. And Ma said, Martha, Ma, Jesus, would you please tell my sister Mary to get up and come help me cook the rest of these greens in here? <laughs> Martha, 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 you are troubled by so many things. Your sister has chosen the best part, and I'm not going to take that from her. She's sitting here listening to me. It's a little bit more than getting the kitchen clean. It's a little bit more than just going out and cutting the grass. Yeah, we'll cut the grass later. But right now, you sit and you listen to the me. You sit and listen to me. God even came out of heaven, and he said, when it was on a non-transfiguration, he said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Listen to him. Listen to him. Hearing the word of God. You, it, oh, glory to God, man. Listening to this word consistently be taught. Listen to this word consistently be taught. Listen to this word just consistently be read to you. Constantly being read to you. <clears throat> it opens up a whole nother level of understanding. It it well it it, it, it gets away, it, it chases away fear, it chases away doubt, it chases away unbelief, it, 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 it solves problems, 
even when you don't understand the whole scenario of what the problem is, when you take this word, you hear the word, and then you begin to apply this word, just like they did in Nehemiah, it'll bring forth a great feast. Mm. I think this is the best preaching I've ever done in a, in a while. Man, there's some good stuff right here. I mean, literally, and, and this is where we're at, man. Do we believe this word? Or are we still in a bunch of doubt? Do we believe this word? Do we believe that Jesus is this, he is the manifested word of God? Oh, I don't think I should do that. that that's good, man. I mean, I, but it, just, it makes me want to read more. Makes me want to read more. Makes me want to read more. Last verse. <clears throat> Last verse. Turn your Bibles over to the book of uh, 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 Proverbs. Real quick. Real quick. Proverbs, pastor. This new Bible, man. We're playing this game with me. Proverbs. Chapter, uh, verse 20, chapter 27, not verse 27, chapter 27, Proverbs 27. Come on, we only got a few more minutes here, a few more minutes. Y'all on my time now. <clears throat> verse 1. Y'all there? It says, Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring forth. <laughs> Paul wrote to Timothy and he said, Timothy, your li our lives is like steam, it's like mist. You know, you cooking water on a pot, uh, water, boiling water, and just as fast as you see the steam come off the pot, it dissipates. More steam, it's another person, dissipates. More steam, dissipates. Even if you live to be a hundred years old, in our eyesight, I may see older people, 100 years or plus years old, you know, and just like they do on the Today Show every morning, they say, I show all these uh, century mark people, and they like, you know, welcome to, to uh, Jenny's Cranberry in, in Cranberry, Illinois. You know, she's 101 years old today. Yada, 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 yada. You know, happy birthday wish to her. We say, oh man, that's 100 years old. It's people out of the Old Testament they live to be seven, eight hundred, nine hundred years old. <laughs> I mean, long time. Hundred Moses lived to be 125. Enoch never died. <laughs> he just he just walked. And he lived shortly sometime after Adam. He just walked on in the glory. You don't know what tomorrow brings. I don't know what tomorrow brings. Don't he say, what he say? Do not boast about tomorrow. Now underline the word boast here. That means brag about what you're going to do tomorrow. Don't try to come up with plans of what you're going to do tomorrow. But at the same time, you do have to plan, but tomorrow ain't granted. You live... The Bible talks about living by faith. You, faith is always now in the present tense. So what are you doing in this present tense? You trust in God. And as you trust God and his word or what he said, because he has something to say. You trust God, tomorrow will bring forth a feast. Even if it's the feast is in glory. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm really, really learning to live by this basic principle. 
So what did he say? He said, he said, do not boast about tomorrow, but you don't know what tomorrow will bring. You trust God today, and you live in the joy of the Lord today, and you praise and you worship God today, and you obey God today, today, if you will hear my voice, heart not your heart, today, not tomorrow, today. Do y'all get that? I get it. Thank you, Lord. We needed to hear that. And you know, you know, that ain't no Christmas message. Yes, it is. It's this word. He is. That's why we celebrate Christ must because of Christ. Christ must. It's he. He is the Christ. Praise God. We'll be right back. We'll be right back.